started, we have some people. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Uh, call this uh, meeting to order. It's the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Water Authority, um, June 26th. Trustee Rael is excused. All other members are present or about to be here. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, the consent ag agenda will include items C1923, C1924, C1925, and C1926. Uh, we're going to begin with a moment of silence and a Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner uh, Stephen Casada. Um, there's approval of minutes. Item three, I make a motion to approve the May 22nd, uh, 2019 minutes. Second. It's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye all opposed say no. The motion carries. Uh, we have um, we'll recognized some people, and this is under 4A proclamations and awards, Technical Customer Advisory Committee Appreciation Awards to um, both um, Eggy, Egg. Richardson and Mike Hightower for their service on the Technical Customer uh, Advisory Committee, having fulfilled two terms. Eggy and Mike provided their expertise and many hours of their time to help further the goals of the Water Authority and provide a direct conduit between the utility and those it serves. During their time on the committee, they were involved in reviewing several ordinances, studies, policies, and plans, including the Water 2021 um, 2120 resource strategy, water conservation plan update, water and sewer rate evaluations, wastewater reduction ordinance, and cross uh, connection ordinance. Uh, you both, are they both here? Okay. If you would please come up and uh, we want to recognize you and if you could just come around here and accept these awards on behalf of of the Water Authority. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thought Larry Gallegos was uh, was out there, I guess, to take a photograph. Okay, then we next go to public comment item five. Luce, are there any, is there anyone signed up to speak? We have three speakers. Okay. The first speaker is Elaine Simino, followed okay. by Casey Padilla. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, my name is Elaine Chimino. Uh, I've been working uh, in Sandoval County, uh, and I'm very, um, I want to bring forward an uh, issue on the brine wells out there and the and potential impacts to the Rio Grande and impairing uh, water wells on the West Mesa, including Rio Rancho and Northwest Albuquerque. Um, we have a, a company in New Mexico called IMH who um, is working, they're out of Arizona, and they are liquidators uh, and uh, partners with J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, they have uh, several violations under the SEC, and they have several cease and desist orders um, in several states, including New Mexico. Uh, in the several court proceedings that are going on regarding this, uh, there are injunctions that are being violated in the state of New Mexico. Uh, one is from the 13th Judicial for Judge Davis. Uh, there is now a discharge permit in front of NMED that's due by July 30th for comments, and we are asking 
uh, the board to intervene in this, to have a witness to any um, thing that is going on at those wells. Uh, I think it's important that um, that the Water Authority uh, take a great interest in, in those brine wells out there. Um, there's a lot of problems with those discharge permits and I would like uh, further time to talk with your staff uh, regarding those permits and what the Water Authority can do in this case. I know I don't have very much time here, but uh, these representatives uh, include Gary Lee and Larry Bain, and um, they have been violating uh, the injunctions with the uh, state engineer, and uh, unknowingly, many of the um, uh, staff have been talking to them um, and they aren't aware of some of the criminal activity that is going on with scam, investment scams on those wells out there. So I think it's important, this is, this is really big. I would say that the um, accountants that are looking into this uh, find it on the scale of Enron out there. So you need to be aware of what is happening and I'd like to talk to your staff further. Thank you. Casey Padilla followed by Elaine Hebbard. Welcome. Good afternoon uh, respective city councilors, commissioners and Miss Nair from the mayor's office. I just want to take this time and I want to just kind of point out, uh, we finished our collective bargaining agreement with the Water Authority a couple of weeks ago, and I just wanted to recognize them for the job that we did together working as a team. Um, you know, the leadership with uh, Mr. Sanchez and John Stomp and Judy Bendy and the attorney, um, they see that it's a benefit for the employees that, uh, you know, working together actually, um, you know, builds up your workforce and it brings up morale. And I just want to point out to thank them, you know, for the job that we did together, working together. And um, just to say, you know, it was good to work with them. You know, it's, it'd be nice if this would I kind of branch off to other entities throughout, this, throughout the state. But you know what I mean? I think this is one that actually stands out you know, I think it should be the star here and it should be the example that everybody uses. Sometimes, you know, bargaining, we kind of fear it, some entities, but I think it's something that we embrace together and I believe they found that formula and we've been able to work with it. And I'd just like to recognize some of the members that were on the bargaining team, like Rocky Gutierrez, Joy Sanchez and Derek Graham and some of the other board members, uh, Joshua, Roberto and Lewis, that, uh, you know, part of their team being with us to work with them, it's really worked out great and uh, I just wanna thank you guys. Thank you. That's very good to hear. It says a lot about um, leadership here at the Water Authority, in particular our manager, Mark Sanchez. So thank you very much. Our final speaker is Elaine Hebbard. Okay. How often is it that two Elaine speak? <laughs> Sorry. Good evening. My name is Elaine Hebbard. Several items on today's agenda or not on the agenda lend themselves to comments. As I mentioned last month, and maybe it's in your minutes or not, my handout that I provided, and at earlier meetings, Water 2120, while a broad outline of policies needs, it needs objectives and metrics in order to show success. Plans usually have yearly objectives that advance the goals. Each objective should be smart as possible, meaning it's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. Each objective should have a plan that details how that objective will be achieved. Water 2120 lacks those objectives and detailed plans. That was one reason that I voted against it. I didn't get one of those little awards. As a member of the TCAC, it wasn't complete yet. Then, as now, several of the members work for firms which have contracts with the ABCWA. That's true for the two nominees tonight. While no doubt experts, Agreeing with the activities of the ABCWA may be in their interest, or at least making disagreement a little more difficult. Is that what the board wants as a vehicle to obtain advice on its policies? The lack of objectives and action steps still exists three years later. Several of the action plans have not yet been brought forth even in draft form. Interestingly, that is the complaint made about the Mexico Environment Department's 2019 strategic plan for the Kirtland jet fuel spill in today's letter to the uh, op-ed. It has no schedules or deadlines. 
The example I've used is the lack of groundwater management plan. Water 2120 reaches this one goal to reach 50 feet below pre-development level. Pretty vague. What are the targets to achieve success? Those are not provided in the water report. You get one number, which is the overall water production, not how much groundwater and surface water. Those are important. Um, <coughs> receiving useful information is paramount to this board making good decisions. So meeting the physical and physical targets set by the board will be of increasing importance with the climatic changes that the region is already encouraging, experiencing. I would hope that setting and achieving resiliency goals will be an activity of the ABCWA, perhaps even being a part of the executive director's charge. Thank you. Thank you. So we go next to item six. The next scheduled meeting will be in August, 21st of August at 5 p.m. in these chambers. Uh, go next to item seven, which is the introduction, first reading by legislation. Uh, there's an item that needs to, uh, there's, there's a request that this item be placed on the agenda for immediate action. Is there a motion to do that? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second to uh, for immediate action to put this item, A, R1916, authorizing an agreement with PV Trails Albuquerque, LLC, for water and sewer service for Unit 3A of the Trails subdivision. Uh, did you oh. want to say something? Madam Chair, members of the board, I present, oh. Not yet. oh, not yet? Oh, okay, that's right, it has to go through approval. Okay. It's got to get approval, okay. <laughs> all those in favor say aye. aye. Aye, all opposed say no. The motion carries. It, it'll wait, yeah. Uh, uh, so item A, consent agenda. We did move a lot of items to the consent agenda. Of course, any commissioner or can remove items from the agenda. Uh, is there a motion to, to move the consent agenda? So moved. Second. So a motion and a second to remove the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The motion carries. We go next to approvals, um, and this would be uh, 9A. R1910, the amendment to approved uh, to, to the approved operating budget of um, fiscal year ending uh, June 20th, 2019. Mr. Sanchez. Yeah, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, this item was introduced at the last meeting. It would appropriate an additional half a million dollars for our risk program, basically covering uh, workers' compensation. Okay. I move approval. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve. Item 9A, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no, the motion carries. Takes us next to item 9B, R1915, authorizing the removal of certain uncollectible accounts from the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Water Authority utility accounts receivable records for FY 2014 and prior. Good Welcome. evening. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Adrienne Candelaria. I'm the Division Manager for Customer Service. So the item before you this evening is a request to approve the removal of uncollectible debt from our accounts receivable records. We'd like to come every quarter and present another batch. This approximately $55,000 of debt represents time bar debt because it's greater than four years old. Uh, it primarily represents water and wastewater accounts that we have been unable to collect. So we're requesting your approval uh, of this item this evening. Uh, so we can remove it from our accounts receivable records, and I can ask Stan for any questions that you might have about these accounts. Thank you. Are there any questions? I move There's a motion and a second to approve 9B. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries. Takes us next to 9C, R 1916, authorizing an agreement with PV Trails Albuquerque. We just talked a little bit about that. Water and sewer service for Unit 3A of the Trails Subdivision. Chris Cadena. Welcome back. Hello again. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Christopher Cadena. I'm the principal engineer with Utility Development. And I'm presenting to you a development agreement for a proposed uh, development consisting of about 104 acres of undeveloped land located south of Paseo del Norte, west of Rainbow. The development is going to be phased in nine phases with some single family residential, multifamily residential, and a commercial tract. It's located in the 5W uh, pressure zone to, uh, in the Corrales trunk. And the development will be provided service contingent upon some master plan infrastructure. That master plan infrastructure consists primarily of a reservoir storage tank, uh, as well as a transmission line. 
Uh, upon service, the development will be required to pay the applicable utility expansion charges as well as water supply charges. The development will also be reimbursed for master plan infrastructure through available water utility expansion charges that connect and benefit from that infrastructure. So is this, so this particular development, is it adjacent to an existing development? Yes, it is proximate. There's, uh, it's adjacent to an existing uh, water system that's part of a closed loop system. Uh, okay. So this is adjacent to that existing water system. Okay. And is it in the city of Albuquerque? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve I item C? Second. There's a motion and a second to approve 9C. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The motion carries. Under item 10, other business, we have a Water Usage and Precipitation by Catherine Uhas. Welcome. Thank you. There it is. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, as you all know, the first six months of this year have been cooler and wetter than average, which has led to some significant water conservation savings. Our savings have even increased since this slide was created. As of June 23rd, we are now 1,163,000,000 gallons under our use from last year. This is about four and a half gallons per person per day. Our gallons per capita per day usage last year was 125, so that puts us at 120 to 121 for this year. Our goal is to reduce our use to 110 gallons per capita per day by the year 2037, so we are approaching that goal much more quickly than we planned. And that's great for conservation, but it could have an impact on revenue. Also, this is an exceptional year. When we, we may see a rise next year, and that won't be a bad thing because we have achieved such great progress on achieving our uh, water conservation goal already. So if we see a little rise in use next year, that won't be necessarily something to get too worried about. And finally, this is the current precipitation probability map for July, August, and September. And things continue to look this good or even better than this in terms of rain and snowfall all the way through January of 2020. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, that's good news. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Takes us next to 10B, which is water quality update regarding the New Mexico Environment Department and Albuquerque Public School. Mark Kelly. Madam Chair and members of the board, uh, I'm Mark Kelly. I'm the Compliance Division Manager and uh, recently uh, led, has been in the news a lot lately uh, due to some testing at several APS elementary schools. And tonight I'm going to talk to you about the quality of the water that's going into those schools. Uh, our water supply is safe to drink. We meet all of the requirements of the Safe Drinking Water Act. And we know that because we do a lot of testing. We test not only according to the Safe Drinking Water Act requirements, but we also test our distribution system uh, quarterly. We have uh, monitoring that customers can request from us that we do. And we also coordinated some testing with uh, APS. And all of our testing has been under the 15 parts per billion action level set by EPA. So we test every three years as required by the Safe Drinking Water Act in customers' homes. We test the most susceptible homes, those built between 1983 and 1986. We test 50 homes every um, three years at least. We've never had any violations for uh, lead compliance in, in this testing. All results have been uh, historically below the 15 parts per billion at the at 90th percentile. We've never had anything above the 15 parts per billion and um, a great percentage of them are at about one part per billion. We have 20 distribution zones throughout the service area and we test each of those zones quarterly for lead. This is above and beyond what the requirements are set by the state and EPA and we've never had anything over the 15 parts per billion um, action level seen in any of this monitoring throughout our distribution system. And this is testing the water in the water lines. Uh, customers can request testing, uh, residential customers can uh, uh, request that we test their home for lead 
and we'll have a person, a water quality specialist, go out to their home, drop off a sample bottle. Uh, they fill it up the next morning usually, uh, and then our water quality specialist coordinates with them to bring it back, and the, uh, the results are shared with the customer as well. This comes at no cost to uh, the customer. Uh, in 2018, we had 41 customers take us up on this. We've done about 177 samples since we started doing this in 2016. None of those have ever come up uh, above the action level of 15 parts per billion for lead. The customers can request this online. It's pretty easy to find through the Water Authority website. They can also request this via an email to our water quality group, or they can call in our water quality information line, talk to a water quality specialist, and they'll get them set up to get a test done. We coordinated with APS when they were doing their testing, and we looked at um, sample sites near the schools that they were testing, so we took water out of the water mains and tested it. Uh, the lead levels were very so low in the water supply, indicating that it is not a water supply problem, that it is an issue with the internal fixtures at those APS schools. That's all I have, and I'll stand for questions if you'd like. Could you, uh, uh, so, sorry, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, could you tell me what schools and what district those, those schools are in? All of the schools are APS elementary schools and they're throughout the city. The, the highest one, I believe, was at uh, Bellhaven Elementary School. So, Did you have any more yeah, questions? I don't know if that was, so the, just across it, they were all elementary schools? They yeah, the, 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 <laughs> what happened was the, um, the state offered some money through the Mexico Environment Department to test schools for lead and uh, APS uh, took them up on that. They tested several of their mostly older uh, elementary schools and they took a subset of those schools and they tested um, various fixtures throughout those schools for lead. They did get detects that were higher than that 15 parts per billion, which, which caused some concern on their part. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we coordinated to see what is the water quality going into the schools and they tested the water quality coming out of their faucets. And, and the results of that indicate that it's usually an issue inside of the school with their, with their fixtures being old or their fixtures uh, having lead parts in them. Okay, yeah, so I, I guess so for people don't know, I guess the average uh, APS school is uh, 40 years old. That's the average age for a school. And I, I would assume the elementary schools are Probably a little older than, than that because you know some of the newer schools are are the middle schools, high schools that have been built recently. So, so that seems like it's going to be a uh, uh, a structural problem for APS. Indeed. Thank you. Councilor Sanchez. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Are we not working with the Albuquerque Public Schools when it comes to testing? Because you just stated that the state provided some funding to get the testing done. We're working with them in terms of uh, testing the water that, that's going into the schools, but we also helped them out. They, they ran out of bottles, so we helped them out with uh, getting more bottles to do the testing. But um, the Water Authority has not tested inside the schools ourselves. That's, that's a, um, the APS jurisdiction of what the water is like inside the school. Are they testing on a regular basis or are they not? Because they're I mean not. They, they've only... Uh, done this uh, in this last uh, year to, to, to take advantage of that funding. Thank you. Councilor uh, Daniel. So, so what's kind of some of the dialogue that's gone on between APS now? What are they doing? Are they off offering water bottles to the kids? Are they, do they have a plan as a result? Do you know? Uh, their plan, I believe, is to... Um, to immediately, once they get a result back that is over that 15 parts per billion, they, they take that fixture out of service, whether it's a sink or a water fountain or whatever, and they've been replacing those. They're not, um, they're replacing, retesting, and then putting them back into service. Okay, thank you. When you said that there were some lead parts uh, in the system or the plumbing systems of these older schools, how old would they have to be to have allowed for lead parts? 
In uh, around in the, the early 80s, they um, made lead solder illegal. So um, right now, you cannot buy lead solder. And uh, up until that time, you could use lead solder to, to put pipes together and, and fixtures like that. They also had, uh, back in those days, um, the, the quality of the brass used in a lot of the plumbing fixtures did have small amounts of lead in it, which is actually now not allowed anymore. I see. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much. That's the last item on our agenda. And I've mentioned the next meeting is in uh, uh, August. And I hope everyone has a wonderful vacation. Thank you all very much. This meeting is adjourned.